One day, two deputies in the sheriff's office answered an emergency call at a farmhouse. When they walked in, they found the nude bodies of a man and a woman in the bedroom. They had been shocked to death. When they went to the living room, they found the body of a man with a gun at his side. No doubt about it, one deputy said to the other, this was a double murder and suicide. This guy came home and found his wife in bed with somebody else and shot them both, then he shot himself. You're right, the other deputy replied, double murder and suicide. But I'll bet you when the sheriff gets here, he's going to say it could have been worse. No way, how could it be worse? There are three people in the house and all of them have been shot to death. It couldn't be worse. You're on. About that time, the old sheriff arrived at the scene. He walked into the bedroom and saw the two nude bodies. He then walked into the living room and saw the man on the floor with the gun by his side. No doubt about it, the sheriff said, shaking his head. It was a double murder and suicide. This guy came home and found his wife in bed with somebody else and shot them both. Then he shot himself. After hesitating for a moment, the old sheriff looked his deputies squarely in the eyes. But you know, he said, it could have been worse. The deputy who had lost the bet jumped up and shouted, Sheriff, how could it have been worse? There are three people in this farmhouse, and all three of them are dead. It couldn't have been worse. Yes, it could, the sheriff retorted. You see that guy there on the floor if he had come home yesterday? That would be me in there in that bed. <laughs> There's a lady who is cheating on her husband. One day, while they are having sex, she hears her husband pull into the driveway. Her boyfriend says, Oh no, what should we do? She says, Hurry, get dressed, and go to the living room. Once they're in the living room, she starts sprinkling baby powder all over him. He says, What are you doing? She says, I'm making you white like a statue. Just stand in a pose. My husband will never know you're real because he's stupid. Her husband comes in and sees them and says to her, what's that? She says, well, me and Mrs. Johnson next door went shopping today. She has one just like it. I liked her so much that she took me to get one. He shrugs it off and goes about his business. That night, the boyfriend is still standing in the living room still posed, too afraid to escape. He hears the husband wake up and open the bedroom door. The husband walks past him, opens the fridge, pops open a beer, and makes a bologna sandwich. He then walks up to the boyfriend and hands him the beer and sandwich and says, here, eat something. I stood like an idiot at the Johnson's for three days and nobody offered me as much as a glass of water. Once upon a time, there lived an American biker named Rick. Now, Rick loved to ride his motorcycle, but was tired of driving up and down the same roads day after day. One morning, he woke up and decided to travel the world. So he saved up some money, got on a plane, along with his trusty Harley, and set out to explore the globe. For the next few weeks, Rick spent his days riding two and through some of the most popular European cities like Paris, London, and Rome. After seeing all Europe had to offer, he moved on to explore the rest of the world. Over the next few months, he rode through the African savannas, the deserts of Egypt, and even made it to the top of Mount Everest. He was having the time of his life until he reached a small town in China. Unexpectedly and out of nowhere, a beautiful Chinese maiden crossed his path, causing him to fly off and crash his motorcycle. Apologizing, the maiden offered Rick to pay for the repairs and a place to stay while they fixed his bike. My name is Yu. It's an honor to meet you. The beautiful maiden introduced herself to Rick. It turned out she was the daughter of a rich magistrate, so he spent the night in a small palace in the center of town. However, Due to the scarcity of motorcycle parts, Rick had to spend several days in the palace, in the presence of you. Over the next few days, she took a liking to him and his strange American ways. As expected, Rick took a liking to her too. 
The two quickly became inseparable, but Yu's father didn't approve, for Rick was an outsider. By the time the motorcycle was finally up and running, Rick had fallen madly in love with Yu and refused to leave. Yu begged her father to let him stay, but instead the magistrate had Rick banished from the town. He warned him if he ever came back, he would have him beheaded. Rick was devastated. He had no motivation to continue on the rest of his journey. It seemed as though there was nothing left for him in the world if he didn't have his beloved Chinese maiden. So he did the only thing any other sane guy would do. Rick rolled back into town screaming, I'm never going to give you up. <laughs> there was once, in a small town, a man named Don. One day, Don was walking on top of a fence and he slipped. When he slipped, the fence split him in half, right up the middle. But miraculously, each half of Don survived. Each half got up, started hopping away, and essentially started living separate lives. The left half, more prone to rational thought, spent most of its time in libraries and got an accounting gig. The right half, more creative, picked up painting and taught pottery at the local community college. On top of the spectacle of a man split in half, the townsfolk could not believe how rarely they saw both halves of Don at the same place. Indeed, nobody could think of even one occurrence of this happening. Now one day, half a man walks into a bar. The left half of Don, always punctual, walked into the local watering hole at precisely 8 was and ordered a shot of whiskey, which the bartender poured for him. At 8.01, the right half of Don wandered in, sat down, asked for a beer, and nodded to his other half, which nodded back. As the bartender poured him the beer, the left half of Don took his shot, left just enough to cover the bill, and left at precisely 8.02. The bartender was astounded. He was the first person to see the two halves interact since the accident. As it dawned on him how rare this was, the bartender exclaimed, a little louder than he wanted to, Hold on here for just one minute. <laughs> Three porn stars were getting drunk, and they started bragging to each other about their exploits. First porn star said, Girls, I'm easily the biggest whore in this bar. One time I fucked a soccer team, the whole team, including the towel boy and I did it by sneaking into the locker room, getting naked, and then just waiting for the game to end. Second porn star then said, Pshhh, you're a nerdy teenager compared to me. I fucked an entire fraternity when I was in college, even the pledges, and I did it by just walking up, knocking on the front door, and asking who was ready for some fun. First porn star was taken aback, but third porn star didn't even blink. She just said, Girls, compared to me, you two may as well be a couple of Catholic nuns. Wasn't long ago that I fucked every man, woman, and child in these here United States, and I did it by signing a non-disclosure agreement during an election year. <laughs> My friends, if you want to watch other funny jokes, subscribe to the channel.